What is up, everybody? Savage Lord Barlow here, and I am back with episode two of Hollywood You Rising Stars. Now, as you guys seen in my last episode, I had no money and no diamonds. Now I have over four million, close to five million diamonds. I mean, cash and two hundred and fifteen thousand diamonds. Now I spent about sixteen hundred dollars on on all of this. Did I just waste my money? I have no idea, but um. If I don't continue to play this game, then I probably did just waste a lot of money. Anyways, guys, with that being said, we're going to do money to burn because we just spent some money. Let's check out this plot over here. To unlock more land, tap a real estate sign. When the land's ready, to, when the land's ready tap on the, bow, on the bow. I cannot read already. All right, let's get it. Just going to speed things up. Money to burn, okay. You and Emilio reached the edge of campus. I'm pretty sure this is the spot your benefactor was talking about, but I don't know why we're here. Look, there's another envelope in the grass. You pick up the envelope and open it. Whoa, check out all this money. So cool. Man, where's my mysterious benefactor? If I have one, they need to step up their game. A mysterious benefactor just gave Dennis a bunch of money. Will you accept money from a, from a stranger? Hey, there's a note in the envelope too. It says... Use some of this money to improve the look of the campus. It's fate, it's fate and yours are tied together. That's deep. What else does it say? That's it. Nothing else. What are you going to do? I, I guess I'm going to decorate. You just unlock decorations. You can buy them from the store and unlock more decoration by purchasing more land plots. Um... I'm not going to cut this episode this short, so we're just going to keep going. Time to decorate. Let's make campus look as good as we do. Buy decorations from the decor store. Decor. 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 Section of the store. Buy a palm tree. All right. Boom. Just throw it down there. You know, the tree really makes a difference. Oh, yeah. Very L.A. Definitely an upgrade. Dennis just planted a tree in Hollywood U. Or is this just a new way of saying Dennis was throwing shade? So, how are you feeling? Weird. I mean, the campus looks better for sure, but... But now you have a mysterious benefactor who's leaving you envelopes full of money, which is really unusual, awesome, and highly suspicious? Yeah, exactly. All that. Well, if you're new mysteri... Well, if you're new mysteri... Ah. Well, if you're new mysteri... Ah. Well, if you're new mysteri... Well, if you're new mysteri... Mystery, mystery. Well, if your new mystery friend is shelling out the big bucks for you to go here, then you better attend all your classes. Oh, right, class. That's the thing. All right, guys, we're going to do this quest also. Classes at Hollywood U are nothing like what you're used to. All right. Addison waits in your dorm room as you hurry to pack your book bag. Are you almost ready? We better hurry if you don't want to be late on your first day of class. Almost. To be honest, this campus is so glamorous, it's easy to forget it's a university at all. Not like any you've seen before, trust me. And the teachers, well, you're about to find out. You and Addison rush inside an opulent, spacious theater on campus, hurrying to grab seats among the other students. But the, fe ah, but the professor has already begun talking. This is Hollywood 101. I'm Professor Hunt. And he spots you and Addison sneaking in late. You two, get out. Wait, us? Did I stutter? In Hollywood, even being on time is considered 15 minutes late. And you are even later than that. Out. I'm going to sit down. He ain't my daddy. Dennis, what are you doing? You sit down, returning the professor's hard, returning the professor's hard stare. I don't give up that easy, professor. Good. Fortunately for you, this is not a movie set. Make no mistake. If you show up late without a recent amputation, you will be fired on the spot. Now don't interrupt me again. Dennis just met a tough professor in class. Will Dennis get into good graces? Now then, the class is about exploration. Each week, you'll have the opportunity to collaborate with your classmates from every discipline. Because while you may think you understand your craft, while you may think you've got what it takes to make it here, you don't. Not yet. Okay, that's enough pep talk. Your homework tonight is to find a partner. Your first assignment begins tomorrow, bright and early. Hunt focuses his icy eyes on you. And if I were you, I wouldn't dare be late. Hunt walks off stage as your classmates scramble to, to pair off. You whisper to Addison. Wow. Is that guy always so friendly? Professor Hunt is one tough cookie, but he's a smart one too. He wrote, directed, 
and starred in all his stuff. He is the youngest person ever to win Best Director after all. If he's God's gift to humanity, what's he doing teaching a bunch of newbies? Careful, Dennis. Thomas Hunt is a skeleton key. He can open all sorts of doors for you in Hollywood. You really, really want to impress him. So who do you want to team up with first? Alright, the video's not that long, so we're just going to keep this thing rolling. This is going to be the best movie team up since the Avengers. The next day, you meet up with Emilio before class. Booyah! Dennis is finally starring in one of my movies. I can see it now. You'll be my muse. The Uma to my Tarantino. The Johnny Depp to my Tim Burton. Also the, Helen, the Helena... Hel Helena? Boham Carter to my Tim Burton. You're far too kind. In case you're not familiar with my work, my biggest influences are Michael Bay, John Woo, and myself. Now let's see what project the professor wants us to totally crush. Dennis is working with Emilio on the next project. A match made in heaven or development hell. Or in development hell. You and, em you and Emilio take your seats as Professor Hunt paces on stage. Between the deadlines, the budget and the mor moronic money-grubbing producers, Hollywood is just one big pressure cooker of a town. But when things start falling apart, which they will, because you will screw up, that's when you show whether you're, you're a name or a nobody. Time for your eagle beavers to taste that pressure. Each team will make a short film from scratch in 24 hours. A murmur of excitement and, appre and, and apprehension ripples through the class. That's what I'm talking about. Fast and loose. That's true cinema. Just 24 hours, though? That sounds pretty tough. Not tougher than us, Dennis. Trust me, we're going to crush this assignment. No sweat. Let's see how you fare with an actual challenge. All right, guys. <sighs> Professor Hunt passes out sealed envelopes to every team in the classroom. Okay, hatchlings, you're each being assigned a genre and, and a prop that must feature in your movie. You all know what must means, right? Good, that's a start. What do you think we got, Dennis? Better not be something lame. I cannot deal with lame. Your finished films will be your finished films will be exhibited at the Batista Theater tomorrow night, and the least terrible one will be named the winner. Try not to embarrass the university, or more importantly, me. Hunt checks his watch. Your 24 hours begins begin in three, two, one. You may begin. The teams the teams tear open their envelopes. You pull a folded page from yours and read. It says here that a John Fire movie is high fantasy, and we have to feature a dragon egg prop. Jackpot, baby. Dragons mean fire. Fire means explosions. Tell you this will be a piece of cake. I'm pretty excited too, Emilio, but it's still going to be tough to put to pull this off in a single day. Nothing we can't handle. In fact, I live for the challenge. It's like Professor Chisel Jaw said. The best stars in Hollywood got there because they thrived under pressure. Time to show Hunt that we do too. Dennis and Emilio have to make an entire movie in 24 hours. Somebody pick up some coffee. You grab your notebook. Let's get started. First, we'll need a story outline. Story? Forget the story. We're flying by the seat of our pants here. We'll figure it out as we shoot. That's how Star Wars was made, you know. I'm not sure that's accurate. Trust me, so long as something awesome happens every 30 seconds, no one cares. There's only two things we need right now. An epic place to shoot and two stars who can deliver. Let's scout a location and lock down some talent. At a plot of land. Actually, no. I'm not going to do that. We're going to do this one. Boom. Plot of land added. Does that count? Okay. We need, to, we need space to shoot, and it's got to be huge. Emilio's rule number fifth. Number 526, go big or go home. We need a movie star? Let's get a girl. Oh, snap, I forgot I already got another student, I forgot to admit. Yeah. Hold up, actually, I don't have to admit her. I think I could defriend her. Yeah. Bye. Let's get another movie star. We need a girl. We need a girl movie star. Place. We got a girl movie star. And she's bad. But guys, do you guys think I wasted my money on this game? Just throw throw out throw out some statistics or I said statistics. Just throw out some comments. Just let me know. Alright, we got another movie star. Awesome, fine, Dennis. 
We're working fast and furious, just, just the way I like it. Boom, boom, boom. This will be plenty of room to let Sprinkles do her thing. Sprinkles? Just then, the trailer backs up onto the lot and drops its rear gate. A powerful black horse trots out, led by a trainer. That's Sprinkles. I'm thinking we open with a cloak warrior racing across the plain atop a majestic steed. You know something to grab the audience's attention. There's only one question. How do we shoot it to, to achieve maximum spectacularness? Why not use quick rapid fire shots? They're fast and fun. One long tracking shot is ambitious and dramatic. Show mo. Show. Oh, that says slow. Slow mo. I'm going to say one long. Seriously? I always say if you're not going to be daring like, what are you even doing? All right. You're my star, Dennis. Climb up on sprinkles. Let's do this thing. Dennis is riding a horse for a film shoot. Hope Dennis gets along with animals. And action. You hang on tight as sprinkle, Sprinkles the Stallion blitzes across the open field, hoofs thundering. Whoa. Cut, print, and fist pump. That long take totally captured the raw relentlessness of the scene. But a face melting start like this isn't enough to make a great film. If a movie doesn't have a makeout scene, it's like, why are you wasting my time? Do you know any hotties who are down for starring it? I might have some hotties in mind. Seriously, though, make sure they're hot. Nobody pays to watch non hot people make out. Actually, my Uncle Jerry does, but well, that's a long story. Movie star besides me, we got Vienna. We need two hotties to make out so we can stick a camera in their faces. Makeout scenes are my specialty. I've been getting lots of practice lately. Okay, I can do this. It's just being vulnerable and intimate for all to see. No sweat. Wait, wait. Is my hair okay? Do I grab some butt? A little or a lot? Lame. One of our stars is having a meltdown. See, this is why I prefer to work with CGI robots. Don't worry. I'll get Vienna focused. Vienna fidgets nervously on set before the makeout scene. Okay, I'm just going to go 15% tongue. No, 10%. Oh no, my mouth's gone dry. Vienna, I need you to be passionate. Forget about yourself. Forget about the camera. Forget the camera is even there. It's just your character and mine, alone in the world. Show me the fire. Okay, whew. I think I've got this. Thanks, Dennis. Action. As the camera rolls, Vienna catches you with passionate intensity. Dennis and Vienna just made out on camera for a short film. Was it hot or just awkward? Action, check, romance, double check. At this rate, we might even get to sleep tonight. That would be nice. All we need now is the big finale, and that's where we'll showcase our required prop, the dragon egg. Just one more scene, and we're wrapped. A van pulls up on set. The driver hands Emilio a cardboard box. Here it is, the last piece of the puzzle. Emilio rips open the box and pulls out a large speckled ostrich egg. Hey, that totally looks like it could be a dragon egg. Pretty sweet, huh? Scored the last one just before the store closed for the night. Just then, the egg slips from Emilio's grip. It shatters into a puddle of goop. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Emilio stares in horror at the gooey remains of your dragon egg prop. No. No, no, no. It's okay, Emilio. How is it okay? We're disqualified. If we don't get that egg in the movie, and it's too late to buy another. And it's too late to buy another. We're completely and utterly screwed. Oh my god, Hunt was right. I don't have what it takes. I'm a nobody. Only if you let yourself be one. When the going gets tough, real film members find a, real filmmakers find a way, remember? But there's nothing we can do. Sure there is. I say we... Replace it with a fake egg. After wrapping a basketball in a paper, in paper match, you and Emilio shoot the scene with a fake head and egg and shadows. Whoa, so mysterious. And mystery is provocative. After filming the last shot, um, so I, uh, might have freaked out a little bit back there. That's my bad. I've got your back. That's why we're a team. Thanks, Dennis. Well, that's a wrap. Time to put my final cut skills to test and edit this thing ASAP. A few hours later. This is awesome. Now we just have to turn it into a hunt before. Oh, man, we gotta go now. We're almost out of time. Emilio just had a panic attack, but Dennis is quick thinking save the move. movie. Have Dennis ever bailed you out? As the sun rises over L.A., you and Emilio race back to campus. Professor, here's our film, all finished. Hunt looks up from his desk studying you. He checks his watch. You're late. By like 15 seconds, that's nothing. Late is late, Emilio. Hunt takes your flash drive. You both look like crap. Go clean yourselves up. Tonight is a film screening. Tonight is a film screening, not a slumber party. 
Boy, this man tough as nails. He just don't care. He just going off on everybody. I don't think he like me. I look good. And that fade to black. Milio, I think if you can go as twins, we're going to go as twins. I might put you in the red and black, little homie. Red carpet. Let's see. I'm going to put him in that red and black. Looks are everything in this town. On screen and off. We better look snazzy for tonight. That night, you and Emilio enter the Batista Theater where all your classmates are socializing near delirious from exhaustion. The lights go down and the short films start to play. Soon your opening credits appear on the big screen. Nothing like seeing your name in giant letters. Here we go. As the movie starts, the audience holds its breath during the epic tracking shot of you on the black horse. They ooh and awe when the fake, e when the fake dragon egg appears shadowy and ominous. And they cheer at the sight of you locked in a passionate kiss with your co-star. They're feeling it, Dennis. We got them eating out of the palm of our hands. The movie ends with the big explosion, with the big explosion filling the whole screen. Whoa. Come on, Dennis. You know I had to get an explosion in there somewhere. The whole class stands up and applauds the loudest they have all night. Dennis and Amelia Short Short just got a standing ovation at a film festival. When's the sequel coming out? The lights come up and Professor Hunt walks walks to the front of the theater holding his scoreboard scorecard. The real drama is just getting started, Dennis. It's awards time. And I think I know who our toughest competition is. All right. Let's get this. A director. Fashionista. Time for the big finale. Time for the big finale. The part where we demolish our competition. As Professor Hunt begins talking, Rebecca and Addison come up to you. Come up. Come up to congratulate you. I thought that movie was good, but you guys killed it. You and Amelia are totally going to win. Well... Everyone's was good. Thanks, Dennis. But you've got this in the bag. Tonight's films each stood out in their own way. Some for some for better reasons than others. But none of you completely humiliated you, yourselves. And so you survived my course for another day. But let's not drag this out, okay? Award shows are the scourge of Hollywood. Here we go. Get your acceptance speech ready, Dennis. The winner is... It's not us. I know it's not. The winner is... Rebecca and Addison. Are you kidding me? Oh, wait, we won? We freaking won? Woohoo! At the party at my place. Disappointed, you start to head out. You start to head for the exit, but Emilio corners Hunt. Professor, can you at least tell me? Tell, can you at least tell us what we did wrong? Was it the egg thing? Because I'm the one who broke it. You shouldn't be punishing Dennis for my screw up. If you want to be noble, you're in the wrong town. You sink and swim together. And to be frank, I was actually very impressed by the creative way you handled the prop. But the fact remains you were late. And if you think I'm the type to give special treatment, you are sorely mistaken. Dennis and Emilio's short film just lost to Rebecca and Addison at a festival. Can they rebound? As the, as the, as the after party at Addison's dorm continues into the night, Emilio saddles, yeah, saddles up to you. Hey, Dennis, that's, the, that's bull that we lost. You were awesome. If I hadn't broken the egg, we would have we been done on time. Honestly, Emilio, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Who cares if we want some stupid award from a jerk professor? That's not why we're here. We've been making our own way all this time, and that's not about to change. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Hun wouldn't know an awesome flick if it if it if it flicked him in his face in the face. But really, Dennis, I might be ego man, man, manical, man, manical nar narcissist, but I know when I owe somebody. We wouldn't have finished the movie at all if you hadn't kept the clear head. We're a team, Emilio. Today taught us both a lot. I mean it. You stay cool under pressure. If we were the Avengers, you'd be Iron Man, and I'd be some hysterical civilian who shawarmas all over themselves. Next time, I just hope I can be more like you. All right, guys, that is the end of this whole entire episode. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, hit that thumbs up button. I'm going to keep dropping these episodes left and right, and I know this episode was kind of long, but uh, yeah. And um, guys, give me your opinion. Did I waste sixteen hundred dollars on this game? Yes or no? So with that being said, guys, hit that thumbs up button. I will see you guys in the next episode, episode three. Savage Lord Barlow is out. Peace out.